Welcome to Can Angels Fly? I'm Nancy. And I have a question. Have you ever been out and about and ran into somebody and the first question they ask you is, how is life treating you? Or how is life going for you? Hmm. Well, in this video, we're going to explore how life is going for you by visiting the second house in astrology. The second house in astrology is the house of Taurus and it is ruled by Venus. So buck your seatbelt and let's dive right on in and answer how is life going for you? As I mentioned, the second house belongs to Taurus and Taurus is ruled by Venus. Taurus is a fixed sign. That means whatever it um, believes, whatever it wants, whatever it needs is fixed. But we'll come back to that. The second house represents what you have. What, where Venus talks about how much you love it, how comfortable it makes you by making things easy and soft and gentle and delicate and enchanting. So put that together. Venus said, I mean, not Venus, yeah. Well, I can start Venus. Venus says, oh, it is so comforting. It's so enchanting. What is um, the second house, which is my possessions? Taurus is fixed. That suggests that each individual has a fixed set of standards about what gives them comfort and security in life. What is the good life? The idea of the good life. Whenever we deal with the second house, we are talking about anything in your life that brings you comfort and security and pleasure and leisure. In the second house, I have identified multiple features. What do I mean by that? One feature of the second house are your needs. Basic needs of a human. You need water, you need food, you need air, you need shelter. You know, required requirements. The other it is your wants. I want this, I want that. And your desires, things that you want that you hope to get. Where the wants are things that may be fulfilled already. They weren't necessities, but you got them. Let's talk about the second second house. I want to get comfortable. I just want to have a discussion about the second house. How's your life going? Well, let's start answering some questions. You know, everything I try to do is interactive. I want, want to engage you. So let's start asking some questions. Let's start with your basic necessities, your needs. Let's start with food. Do you have food? Thank goodness, most of us do. Now let's talk about the quality of the food. How's your life going? Are you a person that has to eat or has been trained over time to eat um, 
but like a bottom feeder, basically. I'm not going to name any foods because I don't want to insult anybody. But a bottom feeder. You're eating a bunch of junk, um, uh, trash that does not nourish your body, but poisons it, contaminates it, um, it increases your fat. And somebody... Some is somebody shooting in the next block. Yes, in the middle of the day. How is your life going? You no, know, I so I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna stay calm. Okay. Or are you a person that eats food or has a diet of fresh foods and vegetables or um fresh foods and vegetables uh, do you eat hollow meats you know different things like that it's about the quality of the food it's not just that you have food the quality of the food helps to define the quality of your second house let's talk about water do you have water mm. most of us do thank goodness but there are those that don't have water why don't they have water? Well, their water's turned off. <laughs> but then there are those that do have water and it's contaminated. How is your life going? Then there are those that deal with purely the tap water and it's okay. There are others that buy bottled water, spring water, distilled water, you know, that kind of thing. And then there are even, even others that buy a filter and have a filtration system on their tap and drink very high quality water. Hold on, let's not stop there. Some people drink alkaline water, you know. So, again, I pose the question and I will continue to pose this question throughout the video. How is your life going? It is all about the quality of those or these things in your life. What else is a basic necessity for a human? Your shelter. Do you have shelter? Do you have a home? Most of us do, but not all of us. There are people that are homeless or move home to home. Question, how is your life? There are others that have homes that are renters where others are homeowners. But we're still looking at quality. There are others that have homes that are raggedy, <laughs> for lack of better words. And there are others that have very elaborate, elaborate homes. Going back to the same question. How is your life? We've talked about food, water, shelter, air. Let's talk about air. This is a necessity of life. Without it, you die. I know you say air, Nancy. Everybody got air. Everybody got air. True. But let's talk about the quality quality of air. It can be, it is based primarily on your location. If you live in an area that is condensed near factories, the air can become heavy. And polluted. However, the further out away from the city you move, the air gets basically thinner or cleaner and cleaner. That's why people enjoy the, the country life. Again, how's your life going? The second house deals with that what you have in your life that gives you comfort, security, and pleasure. Now let's talk about the pleasures. Hmm. 
let's talk about clothes clothing because clothing has a lot to do clothing and shoes have a lot to do you know i'm gonna pose this again every time i do a video somebody loud with well, the quality of my life okay but this ain't just merely about me it's about us so let's go on with clothing and shoes because that is a also a component of the second house are you a person that gets to buy high-end high quality made clothes or are you a person that makes your own clothing are you a person that goes to these little cheap retail shops are you a person that goes thrift store shopping for your clothing clothing and shoes or are you a person that has to wait for hand-me-downs i pose this question again how's your life going what is another pleasure? Let's talk about an automobile. Because that automobile is also, or not automobile, how about just transportation, is also a part of the second house. Question, do you have a brand new car that still has the new smell in it? Mm -hmm. Or are you a person that five years ago you had a new car now you got a slightly used vehicle or are you a person that has a hoopty barely running oh let's not stop there or are you a person that does not even have a car and has to take public transportation not because you want to because you're forced to i pose the question again how's your life going these are all examples of second house matters. As I mentioned, when it comes to Taurus, Taurus is a fixed sign. That suggests overall that each of us have a set standard of what we believe we need in our life to feel secure, grounded, and stable, to feel like we're living a good life. Again, how is your life going? Now, Venus talks about, oh, this makes me feel so good. It makes me feel so secure. It makes me feel happy. Venus says, this is the good life. Now, let's look at how the second house relates to other houses in a chart. What chart? birth chart a trans chart whatever you know how does it relate well in order to illustrate this part of the second house i want to give you two avatars one is going to be called ph and ph is an heiress and the other one what can we call it okay that's gonna be your name what is his name okay 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 it's just old common jane or joe okay so now we have ph the heiress and we got okay who is our common jane or joe well let's do ph first because she easy she's an heiress heiress has to do with the second house because it talks about taking possession of the family lineage so ph has the family lineage she got a pocket full of money a bank account full of money so how does it affect or influence the other components of her chart of her life well when it comes to the second house it is um harmonious with the first and the third ph no she got that cheddar so her first house her identity, you know, the first house represents your face, your facade, your forward movement. The first thing people see when you approach them. Oh, she gonna look like money. You understand? So, she is confident and bold and, and moving forward. Because she know. You know, she got the lick of money. Mm. The second house is also harmonious with the third house. The third house represents, remember... Your siblings, they got the money too. They heirs too. 
your siblings, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, people from the neighborhood or community, keep the money in the family. It is those people that you go interact with frequently. Now, PH is an heiress. Heiress don't go hang out with people without money. You know, that, that just ain't going to happen. She's going to stay in her a, a common, familiar social circle. They call them, what do they call them? Uh, oh, it starts with a C, I do believe. Those people that's always around you, you can't get rid of, you always run with them. Um, I can't even think of the name of it, but you know what I'm talking about. So it's always the same common people, you know, that you finally feel, feel like you could trust, you got something in common, that kind of thing. But PH. She ain't going to hang with somebody that ain't got nothing. The other houses that the second house are highly complimentary to are the 12th house and the 4th house. So what does the 4th house represent? Well, it goes back to the family, to the home. Heart. Home is where the heart is, is your level of comfort. Well, PH's level of emotional comfort and security is defined by the fact that she is an heiress. She has money. The bills are going to be paid. She going to be dressed. Her hair going to be done. Her nails going to be done. She can travel. She's comfortable. If she gets sick, hey, she can go to the doctor, get the best care. She's okay. She's comfortable, emotionally secure and comfortable. She has friends, entourage. It was, didn't start with a C, an entourage. She has an entourage around her. She's never going to be by herself. She's not going to be lonely. She's comfortable. Her family is comfortable and secure. As I mentioned, the second house is directly uh, related to or compatible with the 12th house. And what does the 12th house represent? The final outcome. After you have all this life experience, after you experience all this money, what will the outcome be? Well, usually, if you're comfortable and secure and you can get all the desires of your heart, uh, the needs and requirements as a human are met, they're never threatened, it's really easy. Easier, you know? So it's usually laid back. You're into yourself, you're able to enjoy life. If you can stay humble, you may even say, hmm, I have enough for charity. That's a part of the 12th house. What else is complementary to the second house? Well, what really gets along with the second house is the sixth house and the tenth house, the house of Virgo and the house of Taurus. Why is the sixth house complementary to the second house? Because when you're at your pH, you're an heiress, and you get all these resources around you. You have an entourage. You're emotionally comfortable and secure and stable. You know, um, you're able to give a little. Mm -hmm. You're feeling okay. And you don't have to go to work because you're an heiress. PH is an heiress. Well, then, what are you going to do day to day? You know, because the sixth house represents your, your daily uh, regimen. Well, she can do what she wants. <laughs> so it's really complimentary to her second house. Money permits her the freedom to schedule what she wants to do from day to day. Whether that's go out and give to charity, or go hang with her entourage, travel, or do whatever. It's completely up to her. Now the second house, as I mentioned, is also highly compatible with the 10th house. And what does the 10th house represent? It represents your um, the public view, how they see you. Well, if your second house is strong, sturdy, and secure because you're an heiress, that means that when people see you, like that first house, that presentation that you give to them, what you're giving to them, is literally 
what they see. And the 10th house also is the house of fame, popularity, you know, that kind of thing. So a person with a strong second house can be famous, popular, you know, that kind of thing. What works do they do? Well, heck, in this case, PH is an heiress. Now, let's talk about the challenges that a second house a person with a strong second house would have. What kind of challenges will they face? Well, PH might face some challenges in the fifth house, the house of Leo, and the eleventh house, the house of Aquarius. Why is this? Because PH, I, I think I need to go add, add something else. PH, who's an heiress, would also have challenges in the ninth house of Sagittarius, as well as the seventh house of Libra. And why is this? Let's start with the ninth house. PH has been indoctrinated into the belief system related to her family, her lineage. Nothing else matters. They were 100% correct in their thinking and they planning. Everything went well for them. So she has no reason to ever question their doctrines, their philosophy, their understanding about the world and life in general. Therefore, she's fixed. PH fixed. Her, her thought pattern is fixed. So... As she interacts with others, she can't cooperate. Mm. And therein lies the challenge for PH, the heiress. Another thing that happens to PH when it has to do with the fifth house is that the fifth house, remember, represents your fabulous self expression. So, when PH step out the door, she immediately, basically, showing off. She a diva. She's a diva. But how is everybody else going to take that? You know? There are going to be some people that don't like her shine. They're not going to like that she's so narrow-minded they're not going to like that she doesn't have to work they're not going to like that she thinks she's so important and that she's always right these are the challenges that ph the heiress will have in the fifth house the eleventh house the seventh house and the ninth house the overall life issue that PH has to deal with has to do with the 8th house. The 8th house is the opposite house to the 2nd house. And it is the house of Scorpio. And the house of Scorpio, or the 8th house, has to do with other people. Other people's bull crap other people's emotional states, just other people's influence period upon PH's life. For the most part, PH can be vain, a narcissist. She gives less than a care about what the others think because she okay. She doesn't have to call and beg nor borrow. She doesn't have to come um, confiding you because she can afford the highest level uh, therapist if she so desires, you know. So, PH can just get stuck in, again, second house is fixed, stuck in the comforts of her second house. However, if PH wants to evolve to our higher self, she has to learn to take others' faith house 
into consideration. Which would directly affect and influence her belief system. And why is that? Well, because those others have their philosophies, their understanding, their viewpoints about life. And if PH takes the time to listen to those others, it can affect and influence her philosophy and understanding about life. That kind of influence would happen in her seventh house, her fifth house, and her eleventh house. Because they're all directly related to PH's understanding about the world at large. Once that changes, it will begin to change those houses as well. And what those houses represent. It was something else I wanted to talk about. So we've talked about PH and her fabulous life. She's an heiress. And how, oh I know what I was going to say. How um, easy it is for her to get stuck in her second house. Of, uh, of absolute pleasure, security, safety, you know, abundance. What I was going to say, I couldn't think of it, but I, now I got it. Is it puts this um, scripture in my mind, or this old proverb, and I'm going to share that proverb with you loosely. I don't remember it word for word, but it said, it is, based, how does it go? Something like, it is more likely that a camel will pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man entering the gates of heaven. Now, let's talk about, okay, okay, is it old common Joe or Jane? Let's see what their life is our life would be like. In the beginning, I posed a range of possibilities associated with food, water, shelter, transportation, you know, clothes, shoes, those kind of things. As I stated, my videos I try to make interactive. You might say that, hey, Nancy, I um, sometimes I can go to the mall and buy the high-end things. And other times I find myself at the thrift store. And then even other times I get those hand-me-downs. It is always alternating. You might say, oh Nancy, you know, I do. I, I try to have a healthy diet, but I can't all the time afford, you know, those that fresh food, that those fresh vegetables and, and fruits, etc, etc. But I try. You can say, Nancy, you know, I did. I bought me a new car. Five years ago, oh, it smelled so wonderful, that new smell. That was five years ago. In that five years, it is gone, that car is gone from, my car is gone from um, new to slightly used to now it is a hoop D. Mm. And most of the time it's broke down, so I'm on the bus. I'm using public transportation. My second house is completely erratic. So how would, oh, okay, okay, okay's life be affected by a fluctuating second house? Well, as I mentioned, the second house is harmonious with the first and third house. The fluctuating 
second house. Oh, before we move forward, I have to mention here that remember the second house, we have our fixed beliefs about what we need to feel secure, grounded, and stable to feel like we're having the good life. And okay, life is fluctuating. Okay is constantly trying to work or do to get themselves aligned with their fixed beliefs. But they're not able to successfully do so and to successfully sustain it. Their second house, whose second house? Okay is fluctuating. How does that affect? Okay. I'm just going to make a K. Let's think of K's life. Um, well, K's, you know, one minute you see K. And she is happy. Another time you see K, she's sad and depressed. One day you see Kay, she's sharp as a runway model. Another time you see Kay, she looks like she just rolled out the bed. That's the first house being affected and influenced by the fluctuation or the instability of her second house. How about Kay's third house of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, people from a neighborhood or community, those people you frequent? That is also affected. How is Kay's social interaction with others affected or influenced by a fluctuating second house? Well, you know, it's about communication. So, a couple of things can happen. Kay may become withdrawn because she or he is aware that their presentation, the first house, is changing. One minute I'm happy, the next minute I'm sad. One minute I'm sugar shop, the next um, I look like a hobo. So, K might withdraw. Another thing that can happen in the third house associated with a fluctuating second house is that K is going from each of his or her social circles looking for the opportunities looking for information about opportunities in which he or she can take advantage of in order to try to work or do or to create the uh, ability to sustain a second house to stabilize a second house so they always seem erratic they always looking for, what's the next opportunity? What's the next job? What's the next place I can go? Who can I connect to? Uh, I'm begging you. I'm doing this. You know, so it becomes a very erratic state with the third house because the second house is, uh, 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 is the core issue and it is unstable. Another thing that the uh, erratic second house positively impacts or strongly impacts is the twelfth house. And the fourth house. Remember, the fourth house represents the heart, the home, the family. Home is where the heart is. It's okay. He or she is her their emotional state at any given time is being affected or influenced by the changes of their second house. So it explains why sometimes you see K and they're happy. And other times K is sad and depressed. That is um, the influence of the second house on the fourth house. It also has to do with the um, 12th house. Because the 12th house represents, remember, it's stuff you can't see. It's after you go going through all these got doggone experiences your 12th house messing with everything 
I mean, a second house messing with everything is fluctuating, causing other effects to occur in other aspect, uh, aspects or areas of life. You feel some kind of way. There's a final outcome. What will it be over time? Well, we know Kay don't have any extra money to give to charity. She can strike that out. But Kay may fall into grave depression. Kay may end up in a mental institution. Kay may end up going to jail. Kay may end up committing suicide. All these very dark, dark things. What's going to happen to poor Kay? Anyway. The next two houses that are highly supportive of that erratic second house is the sixth house and the tenth house. It's the same thing with BH. You know, the relationship between the houses don't change. So, what happens, you know, to Poe K? K daily routine is directly affected by that fluctuating second house. Remember, in the third house, K was going to her close network, her siblings, her her siblings, her, her aunts, her uncles, her cousins, people in her neighborhood, her community, everybody she frequent or he frequent. And saying, where's this opportunity at? You know, tell me what you know. Networking. So in the sixth house, whatever K could align him or herself with, they do it in the sixth house. It's always changing. Because the information K is always receiving is changing. So there's a lack. A stability in the sixth house. There's also a lack of stability in the sixth house because the sixth house, remember, let's, let's do another example, represents your health. Kay said, I try to eat healthy and I do, I do, but sometimes just can't. So that instability in Kay's diet is directly affecting Kay's health of the sixth house. The other house, as I mentioned, is the tenth house. How is Kay's tenth house affected? Well, you know, people looking at Kay. Kay is emotionally erratic. Not just the second house. He or she emotions are erratic. He or she's appearance is changeable. It's erratic. The tenth house represents the public view. Now, how would that erratic energy affect how people see you? And once people formulate an opinion about why you act like you do, you know, that affects your ability to move forward in your career endeavors uh, because they starting to label you now your career endeavors it hinders your ability to advance on or, or, or achieve certain ambitions and, and then 10 house also has to do with your reputation your status your social status now people looking at you sideways something wrong with k when the truth of the matter there's truly nothing wrong with k nothing wrong with him or her. It is the instability or erratic nature of Kay's second house. Now let's talk about the houses that won't agree or vibe or go well with the Kay's erratic second house. Now, remember Kay, she, he or she uh, diet is always changing. They're their clothing and shoes and the source of getting it and how they present themselves is always changing. The houses that want to really agree with it, won't be so maybe critical about that, is the 5th house and the 11th house. Because the 5th house allows a person or permits a person to express themselves outwards. And the 11th house allows a person to have uh, outreaches, uh, 
communications and outreach is reaching further and further out into society. It is a house of humanitarian efforts. So this is most likely where Kay would find her or his assistance for salvation. A charitable a charity through the 11th house or the freedom through the 5th house to express yourself. But at the same time, K is being labeled here. Say, hypothetically, um, K meets somebody for the first time. You've heard that uh, old saying, your f first presentation is key. So, K presents his or herself to someone with the fifth house. And they express themselves to that other. But remember, we got, we're dealing with the second house. How can I say this? I know I'm getting a little messy. The second house is fixed. K understands that I am just like PH. You know, inside, I'm dazzling, I'm fabulous, I'm smart, I'm brave, I'm bold, I'm intelligent. Okay, might even be even more of that than even PH. But when... K goes to have that interaction for the first time with another. All that other is getting is what K is able to present at that time. Let's say when K interacts with this person or has an exchange, they see K on a on a down day. Now K is still presentable, but not meeting her standard. A matter of fact, she's felt so far below her standard because her washing machine broke or her car broke down or um, she couldn't get her hair done. She had to do her own hair, you know, that kind of thing. She's picked up a few pounds because this is the time of the year where she couldn't afford uh, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. So now uh, she she's then put herself or himself together for the presentation to the other. But. K is worth so much more, but she can't present that. What I'm trying to get you to see is she can't present, or he can't present that to the world because of the erratic second house. But at other times during K life, K is closer to her standard of what she needs in her life to feel secure, grounded, and stable. And she goes to meet a person for the first time and she up on her game. She feels highly confident. The other uh, is more likely to be accepting of him or her and to be able to work with him or her. And it can become a positive experience. However, this erratic energy is what I'm trying to get you to see in Kay's life. is a limit. Very limiting for her. For him. Now to find a house is the opposite house of the second house, which is the eighth house. We talked about that house with uh, PH, and it has to do with other people. Again, we just kind of went over other people and how they uh, respond to K. They are responding to K based on the influence of her second house that is affecting influencing everybody everything else unlike ph who is an heiress and don't have to listen to nobody else don't have to care about nobody else because she can go buy whatever she wants and make sure it's in line k doesn't have that uh, uh, option so k is susceptible or su subjected to whatever others want to do or whatever others want to say or whatever others want to think. The eighth house in astrology is also what I call the rabbit's hole. How deep down in the rabbit hole are you willing to go with another? How deeply emotionally committed are you going to be with them? For Kay, 
she is needing something all the time or he is needing something all the time so k is most likely to jump down the rabbit hole with the other pursuing them or dealing with their in order to bring about or try to stabilize her second house or his second house if k is unwilling to dive down that rabbit hole and do whatever is required k he or she won't have the opportunity to try to stabilize their second house and why is that because if k does not engage the other as the other has defined most likely k won't be getting any of the gifts that that other holds or any of the keys that the other holds to help him stabilize his or her life i post you at the end of this video one more time how's your life going now you can answer it next time someone asks you how is your life going? Thank you for coming to Can Angels Fly. Until next time. Bye.